Hey everyone, my name is Alex Candelo, and I'm the Director of Algorithms, Performance, and Tools at D-Wave Systems. And today, I'm going to be giving you an introduction to some of the things that have gone into our Ocean software over the last year. Before I get started, there's a couple things that I want to emphasize. First off, almost everything that I'm going to be talking about today is available in open source. What that means is that the source code, the documentation, the pull request that added the source code, the feature request that led to the original pull request, all of that information is available publicly in, the in open source so that you can get involved. We also have extensive documentation both online in our GitHub repos and on Leap. It's really important to us that we get feedback from you, the users, because your feedback helps us prioritize. There are several different ways that you can get involved and you can give us that feedback, including participating in our community, which is available through Leap, as well as through GitHub, through the standard open source practices of finding bugs, finding features that you'd like, finding uh, things that you'd like to change, things that you think that you know better than us, because you, well, you very well might, and opening up an issue or a pull request to our GitHub so that you can help participate in creating the software that solves practical problems on our hybrid and quantum systems. So before I get into what's new in Ocean, it's probably useful for me to talk about what is Ocean. Some of you, uh, maybe who are new to the D-Wave ecosystem, might not have worked with it before. So I thought I would take a few minutes to tell you a little bit about what's there, uh, what it's for, why we made it, all that good stuff. When I joined D-Wave mm, five or six years ago now, uh, we had a set of tools that were good for accessing the system, but weren't open source. And one of the most frequent questions that I got was, how does it work? What goes into this? What, what are you doing to take my problem and to solve it on a quantum computer? And so to that end, we decided to open source the access. We decided to make it transparent and clear so that people can understand how their problem is being manipulated, they can make changes, they can make customizations, and everything like that. To that end, Ocean is a Python library with C++ backend for performance reasons that is pip installable, available through all of your standard uh, Python install tools that you can run client-side to submit problems to our system. As I've been emphasizing, it's open source so that users can easily customize their code, they can make changes, they can bring their solving expertise to our salute to their stack. Ocean is also a collection of different packages. So what, when you install Ocean, what you're actually installing is a, a collection of different packages that are each independent, standalone uh, functionalities that can be installed individually. This flexible installation is important. So for instance, if you're trying to do uh, different kinds of, um, if you want to install your application in the cloud and you want to have as lightweight an installation process as possible, you can only install, you can install just the packages that are relevant to you. It's also worth noting that Ocean comes pre-installed and pre-configured in the online IDE available in Leap. So that it, you know, if, you, if you don't necessarily have a lot of experience setting up a Python environment, or you just want to get started quickly, or for instance, if you're giving a live demo and you're using a, a borrowed laptop, you can get access to uh, all of Ocean and the full power of Ocean just through Leap. And so with that, I'm actually going to do a live demo showing you a little bit about what accessing Ocean through Leap looks like and what it looks like to submit a problem to our system. So with that, I'm going to start here on our Leap dashboard. When you start on our Leap dashboard, what you're going to see, and I've actually, I should mention that I've just signed in with a standard developer account. This is uh, what you would see if you sign up for a leap, free Leap time right now. Uh, everything that I'm showing, none of this is sort of private to, to internal D-Wave folks. I've just used my Gmail account. Um, and when you sign into Leap, the first thing that you're going to see is our dashboard and our getting started guide. And this has a lot of really great resources for getting started quickly on our system, including things like our illustrated demos, including factoring and signed social network, but also other aspects that I'm going to touch on in just a moment. Scrolling down, you can see some other information about what sorts of resources you have access to, how much subscription time that you have left. Uh, you can see problems that you've submitted. You can see uh, 
the different solvers that you have available, including our new constrained quadratic model solver that we talked about yesterday uh, and, and earlier today, as well as our new Advantage System 4.1, which we've been talking about uh, so far. So what I'm going to actually do then is uh, I'm going to jump into the more ocean-specific parts of LEAP. And I think the most interesting part of LEAP for if you're interested in getting started with ocean is our collection of code examples. This is a collection of open source implementations of different uh, applications or algorithmic ideas that you can use as the base point for an application that you're developing. So for instance, uh, you could search for, say, nurse scheduling or satellite placement or you know, different types of uh, feature selection, different types of problems that you might solve. And when you, uh, and so for instance, I'm going to use, say, sign social network, because that's one of my favorites. Um, and if you click on this, you, know, you can get some information about it. You can get some resources about it. You can also open it up in GitHub so that you can get access to uh, how we've actually implemented this. This is all, again, free and open source available. You can uh, see issues. You can make pull requests and change requests to it. But you can also open this up in our online integrated developer environment, or IDE. This is our full-featured Python development environment available in Leap that lets you solve problems on our systems in a pre-configured place. So when I open this up, I'm going to have Ocean pre-installed. I'm going to have a bunch of other uh, open source scientific computing libraries pre-installed. I'm going to have my uh, access to the system pre-configured, and everything is going to be uh, good to go. Rather than diving into uh, the sign social network problem, though, specifically, I'm actually just going to use this environment and, and show you a little bit of real Python code to give you a sense of what solving problems with Ocean looks like in practice. So I'm going to open up a terminal. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that hopefully it's a bit clearer to see. And I'm going to open up a Python environment. So. Uh, it's really important to me that, uh, the, that we make this clear for the developers. And the so I'm going to be showing real Python code running live in our system. All of this is, is live and in the cloud. So the first thing that I'm going to need if I want to use quantum computing to solve a problem is I'm going to need a problem. I'm going to need a problem I want to solve. So uh, the problem that I'm going to be sort of showing today is a uh, maximum independent set problem. It's a classic optimization problem in graph theory. Um, the basic idea is that imagine I have a set of nodes in a graph, or say, uh, people in a social network. And these nodes have edges between them, or say, relationships in the context of a social network. I simply want to choose the largest group of nodes or people such that they don't share any edges with other nodes in that set. So an independent set are a set of nodes that don't share edges. So let's go ahead and create a graph that I want to solve this problem on. And so to do that, I'm going to import my first uh, open source library, which is NetworkX. This is actually not a library that, uh, this is an open source library that's you know, unaffiliated with D-Wave. It's developed by some folks out of Los Alamos. It's a graph theory library that allows people to solve these sort of graph theory optimization problems and specify graph problems. This is also an opportunity for me to mention that one of the main designs uh, principles of Ocean is that we don't reinvent the wheel. There is already a awesome graph library available in Python called Network X that you can use to specify graphs. And we simply want to extend that functionality to make use of the quantum computer. So let's go ahead and get a graph. And you get to watch me type live, which means there's going to be lots of typos and things. So please bear with me. And let's give it a few ed uh, edges. Edge, uh, oh my god. Typing live is always hard. So we'll give it. A, uh, we'll make a little square graph. Like so. Okay, so I have a graph. It's a little square, you know, A to B, B to C, C to D, D to A. Uh, and I want to find the maximum independent set on this graph using a quantum computer. Probably I could work this one out in my head, but you know, let's use a quantum computer anyway, because it's kind of cool. So to do that, I'm going to import my first Ocean package, which is dwave networkx. 
And this is our extension to the Network X package that allows you to use the D-Wave quantum computer or hybrid solvers to solve these graph theory problems. So let's go ahead and get the Cubo that represents this maximum independent set problem over the graph. So maximum, wait, waited. As I said, lots of typos. And so this function is going to accept this graph that I've constructed and return the cubo that solves it. And when I go ahead and take a look at that cubo, for anyone who's following along who's sort of familiar with this kinds of things, this is the cubo that uh, represents this maximum independent set problem. OK, so I had a graph problem. Uh, I wanted to find a maximum independent set over a graph. I've now constructed the cubo that encodes that problem. The next thing I'm going to need to do, solve that problem on a quantum computer. So let's get a quantum computer. And for that, we're going to use our D-Wave system library. And we're going to import two things, our sampler and our embedding composite. So let's go ahead and get access to the QPU, like so. When I make this call, this is making a uh, request to our REST API to leap uh, using the credentials that have been pre-configured in the IDE so that I can get access to a quantum computer. And I can actually see some information about this, Q this QPU. For instance, I can see what topology it has. I can see the number of qubits it has. I can see its chip ID, other information about it. And I can use it to solve problems. I'm also going to go ahead and wrap this computer in our embedding composite. Our embedding composite is what allows, uh, is what allows us to uh, do the sort of uh, manipulations that you need to do to arbitrary cubos to put them onto the QPU. A lot of you, I think, are going to be familiar with embedding, but the basic idea is that it allows me to map arbitrary graph structures onto the particular topology of our quantum processing unit. So like so. And now let's go ahead and solve this problem. Sample set. So we simply call the sample cubo method on our cubo, and we can get back our sample set. And let's take a look at the resulting solution. And we can see that it is assigned a, we, it has found an independent set of nodes B and D. And that makes sense. We have a square. The independent set is going to be the two opposite corners of that square. I can also configure uh, some other things. So for instance, I can take more reads on the quantum computer. So I could take, say, 100 different reads of this problem on the quantum computer. And when I do that, I will see that it has successfully found the two maximum independent sets on the Cubo. Uh, it, sound, it found the AC independent set 46 times. It found the BD independent set 54 times. So great. Everything's working the way that it should. But what if it wasn't? I mean, accessing the quantum computer is easier than ever, but still some things can go wrong, especially when you're working down at this sort of low level. What if it's not uh, coming out the way that you expected it to? What would we want to do? So in that case, we actually provide a inspector available both in Ocean and in our IDE that lets you inspect the way that the quantum computer was used on a particular problem. So for that, I'm going to do from dwave.inspector import show. I'm going to resolve this problem again. So let's say we got 100, re we're doing another 100 reads. And let's go ahead and call show on the return sample set. When I do this, this is going to open up our problem inspector, which allows us to see the way that the quantum computer was used on this problem. So I can see, for instance, here, here is that little four uh, node graph that I've been trying to find independent sets on. Here's the uh, quantum computer, uh, or sorry, here's the set of solutions that got back. And in fact, I can go ahead and look at the way that the quantum computer was used. Sorry, I'm just going to scroll this out a little bit to make that a bit clearer, hopefully. I can see the way that this problem was mapped onto one of our quantum computers. So in this case, it made use of our 2000Q processor still available in Leap. And you can see exactly which set of qubits each of the different uh, nodes in the graph was mapped to. OK, so hopefully that's given you a little bit of a sense of what it looks like to use Ocean. So far, everything that I've been showing has been available in Ocean you know, up till today. So let's talk about what's new and what's come out in the last year or so. So 
Before I go into another demo, I want to just highlight a few new plugins and a few new packages that have come into Ocean to give you a sense of some of the big changes that have come in over the last year. The first that I want to highlight is our D-Wave Qiskit plugin, which is what allows you to solve problems that are formulated via Qiskit uh, and or formulated via, you know, Cubos, and use the D-Wave system in the Qiskit library to solve those problems. So you can uh, use the D-Wave minimum eigensolver as a drop-in replacement for the Qiskit minimum eigensolver, which allows you to use our QPU in the Qiskit ecosystem to maybe compare results or to just, you know, if you've developed your applications in Qiskit, maybe you just want to use D-Wave via that. The next package I want to mention on the top right of the slide is D-Wave preprocessing. This is a collection of different preprocessing tools for solving problems on the system. So uh, if you want to, for instance, it includes an algorithm called roof duality, which is a polynomial time preprocessing algorithm for uh, fixing some variables. It's a way to take a large problem that has maybe some easy parts uh, and, and remove those easy parts because you don't necessarily need a quantum computer to solve that, thereby creating a smaller, more concentrated difficult problem. It also has things like scaling the problem. You can uh, solve the connected components. Say you have a, a, your problem has disconnected components. You can solve each of those components individually and many, many other features that are useful for taking uh, practical problems and using them, solving them on the QPU. Ocean also comes with a collection of classical solvers that you can use to compare results, say, between the QPU, or maybe you just want to run locally. Maybe you're in an airport and you don't have access to, uh, to the internet. We've, in the last year, added a new one, D-Wave Greedy, which implements a set of different um, greedy algorithms. So they do steepest descent solvers for bi binary quadratic models. This is also especially useful as a post-processing algorithm because sometimes you know, the QPU can uh, have a sample from a slightly excited state, and it's useful to be able to just run downhill from whatever solution the QPU found, use the QPU as a seed algorithm for uh, a greedy algorithm. That's a, it's a good post-processing technique to use. And then the last thing uh, is that we also have a set of other miscellaneous improvements really all over Ocean, but the set that I want to highlight today are improvements to our Dimod library. Specifically, we've implemented performance improvements to the base binary quadratic model object available in Ocean. We've given it a C++ backend to improve the overall performance. And with that came a deprecation of some of our previous C++ implemented BQMs, the Azure Ray BQM and Azure Map BQM. And then the last sort of new big feature that I'm going to spend the last few minutes of my talk talking about is our new symbolic binary quadratic model construction. This is really exciting for us because it allows us to create problems in a way that's more intuitive for the user. So I'm going to pop one more time back into our demo. I'm going to pull back up our Python environment just like we had before. And I'm going to show you some of the, uh, oops, clear is the word I'm looking for the new symbolic uh, parts of uh, the new symbolic manipulation in Ocean. So to get started on that, I'll make this a tiny bit bigger. Let's say I want to start with, let's solve the simplest possible problem that we can solve uh, on a QPU, the simplest possible binary quadratic model. I'm going to uh, import dimod, and I'm going to get myself uh, one binary variable, and I'm going to call it x. This is the smallest, simplest problem that you could possibly solve on the quantum computer. This is, you know, the equation e of x is equal to x. And let's go ahead and solve that on the system. So I'm going to use our sampler from before. This is still the QPU. And I'm just going to sample from our expression x and see what comes back. Ah, and we can see here's a solution from the QPU. Uh, it correctly identified that setting x to 0 will minimize the expression x. So if I was to, and now I can do other things. I can start manipulating this expression symbolically to sort of change it up and to maybe build up a little bit of intuition. So for instance, I can take the negative of x. And when I solve the negative of x, I can see that now, lo and behold, the minimizing value for negative x is 1. I can add, I can scale this. So I can do maybe negative 5 times x. And when I do that, I can see that the minimizing value is still 1, but the energy is now negative 5, just the way you would expect. 
I can introduce a new variable. I can introduce y, say. And now I can start building up even more. So I can do, I could solve the problem, uh, let's say, x times y. And let's give this a couple, uh, let's give this a few more reads as well. And when I see that, I can see that the expression x times y is minimized in exactly the cases that I would expect. When either x is equal to 0, or y is equal to 0, or both. So this is actually encoding a NAND gate, this basic unit of, um, this basic relationship between these two, these two variables. And if I take the negative of that value, I now have an AND relationship between x and y, because that's minimized when they're both equal to 1. And so you can start building up this complexity simply, and you can build up that intuition just using these sort of mathematical expressions rather than needing to construct these problems using Python dictionaries or other sorts of uh, more complicated um, structures. So what I'm actually going to do now, then, is I want to solve that same maximum independent set problem I did before, this time using symbolic logic, because that's a more intuitive way to, to solve this. And, and you can sort of really understand how we solve this problem mathematically. So in order to solve this maximum independent set problem, there's two aspects for it. The first thing that I need is an independent set. And the next thing that I need is uh, the most nodes in that. So let's tackle those separately. So first, let's get the expression that creates an independent set. We'll call it independent set, and so far I'm just going to give it a zero. I can just, for each uh, node in the graph, or sorry, for each edge in the graph, I just simply can do independent set plus equals dima dot binary u times dima dot binary v, like so. And I have to get my syntax correct. As I said, lots of typos. Bear with me, please. So I have been able to, with a little expression, simply say that this is the sum of the node of the variable that represents u plus times the node that represents v for all edges in the graph. And I can now solve this problem on the quantum computer. So let's go ahead and take a look at what comes back from solving the independent set problem by itself on the quantum computer. You can see in this case that I got back exactly the set of all the different independent sets on, that are possible. So this isn't yet a maximum independent set. This is just all possible independent sets. So for instance, no nodes is an independent set. Or we, can ha we have our two maximum independent sets here at the bottom. Or various other ones, so the one node sets. So, so far, I'm simply encoding this independent set problem. So now let's give it uh, the minimization part. So we'll say minimization. This is just equal to sum of, let's say, negative 0.1 times binary, oops, dima dot binary v for v in g dot nodes. So all this is saying is sum up the negative 0.1 times each variable for each variable in the nodes. And now if I want to solve my overall problem, I can simply add my independent set constraint to my minimization, like so. And what I get back are indeed the independent sets. The, well, the, the QPU found two excited states, but by and large, the QPU found the two independent sets just the way that we expected. And so you can see how by this is exactly how I would have encoded this problem symbolically, mathematically. I would have expressed it as a summation, you know, in a LaTeX document or on a whiteboard or something like that. And by using Python, I can just do that exact same thing using Python code. Now, I want to mention that all of the existing syntax that we used before to encode these sorts of problems still works. Um, you could still use all of the NumPy vectors, you could, or arrays rather. You can use the dictionary representations of Cubo and icing problems. So nothing has broken. Um, we've simply added this new functionality that allows you to do this a little bit more easily. 
I also want to call out that uh, some of our friends at Recruit developed an awesome library called PyCubo that does a lot of the same work that this new symbolic work does. And PyCubo is still part of our SDK, um, and it actually comes with some additional features. So it, for instance, can do a higher order reduction, whereas ours, uh, you're restricted to um, binary or quadratic models, rather. So you can't do sort of higher order interactions. OK, so I think then where I want to end up here is to simply say that I want to introduce something a little bit new and a little bit cool. Because so far, I've been talking about binary variables. But what if you have an integer problem, say? Or what if you have a mix of binary and spin variables? How do you want to handle that sort of problem? Well, we actually also added a new quadratic model object to Ocean. And this is an important prerequisite to having the constrained quadratic models that we talked about yesterday and my colleague Hussein is going to be talking about in just a few minutes. So to give you a little bit of a preview of that, I'm going to show you, uh, let's, get, let's jump back into the code for a moment. So in addition to the binary variables that I was showing before, we now have a integer variable, like so. And I can have a variable i, which represents an integer. I can also set some bounds on this. So I can say, let's call the upper bound is equal to 10, like so. I can say uh, there's a, the sort of upper bound by default is uh, a very, very large number. The lower bound by default is 0, but I can set negative lower bounds. And so in this way, I can start building problems with integer variables. And I can actually do things like multiply this integer by my binary variable x. And when I do that, I get back one of these quadratic models, which you can see has the two variables, x and i. It has an interaction between x and i. Uh, and you can see the different variable types of the uh, variable. So x is a binary variable, and i is an integer variable. I can do more complex expressions, like 4 times x times y plus 1 minus i times 4x plus 7, you know, that sort of thing. Oops. And I had a typo. But you get the idea. So I can start building up these more complex expressions. The other thing that I can do, which I think is pretty cool, uh, is I can do inequality expressions. So this is a uh, linear equation, this x times y. I can do things like I can set that whole thing less than or equal to 7. Or I can set that whole thing you know, equal to 0. Or I can do, say, um, if I was doing uh, like a one-hot constraint, I could do uh, one i plus x minus 1 squared is equal to 0. You can see how by building these sorts of linear and quadratic constraints, I can build some increasingly complicated models, and I can use those, say, in a constrained quadratic model. So I won't steal any more of uh, Hussein's thunder uh, in terms of showing, talking about constrained quadratic models. Hopefully, I've given you a little bit of a taste of how you might re start representing constraints so that you can solve your practical problems using them. So the last thing, then, that I'll do before uh, handing it over to Hussein is just point out once more that we have a lot of great resources available in Leap. So just in Leap, we have our set of examples, like I mentioned before. I also want to just re-put out a pitch that it would be great for you to join our community. You can access our community via Leap. And then finally, in Ocean, we have a set of our Ocean documentation, which you can access here via the, uh, the docs. So we have lots and lots of documentation. We have lots and lots of information about Ocean. Please get involved. Please make feature requests. I'm looking forward to hearing from you all. And with that, I think I'm going to hand it over to Hussein. Thanks.